Hello everyone, this is the second part of the nervous system podcast that I promised you with. Uh, as I did, uh, I, I co- as I covered in the first uh, part, the uh, parts of the nervous system, the nature of the nervous system, uh, the neuron, which is the nervous cell, and uh, action and resting potential. Now we will move to the second part, which is about synapses and a bit about the reflex. Okay, so uh, as we said, every neuron. Um, let me move this here. Okay, so every neuron has an a resting potential, or and if he's sending a message, it's an action potential, and this can be seen on uh, the membrane potential or the difference in the charge between outside and inside of the membrane. Now the axon will have an end, will reach an end. So let's say this end is. Let me draw it in another way. Okay, so this is the end of the axon. It might be, let's give an example here that the end is with another synapse, uh, sorry, with another uh, neuron. So the message is moving through this neuron. The action potential is moving this way. And as you, as I said yesterday, it's action potential happening here, then an action potential happening here, then an action potential happening here, etc., etc. It moves very, very fast. Now, when it wants to pass to another neuron, it reaches what we call this region, that we call it a synapse. Okay. So, a synapse is the region between two uh, neurons. We have the presynaptic neuron and we have the postsynaptic neuron. And here, the presynaptic membrane and postsynaptic membrane, and the space between them is the synaptic cleft. In the synapse, at the end or this bulb that we have here, we will have here vesicles. Vesicles, it means like sacs inside. These sacs carry molecules, special molecules. And these molecules are called the neurotransmitters. So the, they are filled with a lot of molecules called neurotransmitter. When the action potential reaches the end of the axon or the synapse, we have uh, a rush of Ca2 plus ions. So Ca2 plus will rush inside because uh, yeah, the, the channels will open by the arrival by the arrival of the action potential, the Ca2 plus will rush inside. The Ca2 plus rushing inside will push or will cause the vesicles to be pushed to the side. When the vesicles are pushed, they will fuse with the membrane and whatever was inside will be released in, into the synaptic cleft or between the two neurons. These neurotransmitters will attach on receptors specific to them. So it's like the lock and key model, so they will attach to special proteins or more specifically special channels. If we look at these here, or like we magnify the picture, so we have a channel that's closed, the neurotransmitter will come, will attach on the channel, will cause the channel to open. If the channel opened, if this whatever is special for this channel might rush in or rush out. Now, if we want an action potential that was here to continue in the other neuron, then which channels do you think we, we will open? We will open the channels of NA+. Of NA plus. Why? Because if the NA plus channels are open, the NA plus will rush inside. And what does that mean? What will happen in this neuron? We have an action potential starting. The NA plus rushing inside will, will create here. That's the bell. Will create here. Uh, sorry. Will create a depolarization, if you remember. Then, which will cause the K plus channels to open. The K plus will go out. That's the repolarization. We have an action potential starting here. And of course, the action potential will continue around and continue in this. So in this uh, neuron because the same reason that we said yesterday. So the attachment of the neurotransmitters on the membrane, uh, on the channels is like we gave a stimulus to these channels. Now, so, uh, okay, just a moment. 
So this is a synapse, this is a typical synapse where the message was here and it continues to the other side. Now sometimes the message is, uh, is blocked. So we have a message here, it reaches a synapse and this synapse decides or the role of the synapse is that it stops the message. So which channels in this case you think will open, the Na plus or the K plus? Of course it's the K plus. The K plus will open and the graph will show a hyperpolarization instead of a depolarization. So this won't show in this case. This will show. If this shows, we are going farther from an action potential. We are going farther from the threshold. So we're causing it to stop the signal. Instead of giving an action potential, it stops. This happens in certain places in the body where sometimes the brain reduces the pain that we feel so that it doesn't affect our, uh, our activities, our daily activities. Now there's something called synaptic integration. Uh, let me just fix this. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Okay, each synapse or each neuron usually is surrounded by many synapses, by many ending, by many axon terminals. Now, so let's say we have uh, this is the cell body of a neuron, uh, poorly drawn cell body, but anyway, and that's the axon of a neuron. Okay, this is the neuron in the spinal cord and the brain, whatever. There is a neuron coming here and ending at it, so that's a synapse here. A neuron coming at the, from this side, ending here, that's a synapse here. A neuron coming from this side, ending here, that's another synapse. So here we have a synapse, that's a synapse, that's a synapse. If this synapse gave or uh, released neurotransmitter that opened the Na plus channels, so we have a depolarization coming up here, so we have something positive, or we have uh, this, this, this synapse is signaling this uh, neuron to fire an action potential. Let's say this one will give, will cause the K plus channels to open, therefore it's stopping the signal. This one is causing plus, let's say. In this case, we have an integration where the sum of all those will be interpreted. So let's say one gave like this, the other plus is like this, and the minus gave like this. We add them up. The result, let's say the result will be like this. If it reached the threshold, then this synapse, this neuron will give an action potential. If it didn't reach the threshold, this synapse won't give an action potential. This is what synaptic integration is, and that's, uh, there's still a lot of details about it, but that's what you need to know for now. The last thing is the reflex. The reflex is an involuntary act where, for example, someone have touched uh, a hot plate or, uh, yeah, so he removes his hand without thinking, he doesn't think about it. What happens? is that it is a reflex to protect us because it doesn't go into the brain. The signal doesn't reach the brain. It's resolved by the spinal cord alone. So the hand touches a hot plate. The receptors, or the heat receptors, will send a message, like a warning signal, through sensory neurons to the spinal cord. When it's a reflex, when it's, it's danger, it doesn't go up to the brain. It goes directly to the spinal cord there will be an interneuron here. So this is a synapse. The synapse will give to the interneuron. The interneuron will give through another, will signal through another synapse to the motor neuron. The motor neuron will give a signal to the muscle. And of course, here also we have a synapse between the neuron and the muscle, between the interneuron and the neuron, between this and this. We'll give the signal to the muscles, the muscles will contract, the hand will move. That's a typical reflex. I think that's, uh, that's it for all. Uh, hopefully I didn't miss anything. Uh, I wish you the best.